Hi, my name is Jake Diok, and I'm a composer and sound designer for Elephant Music and Mammoth Audio. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I go about making my trailer downers. Um, so every month on the first, we have a free sound design pack that goes out. Um, so this month it was downers. And so I'm going to break down for you guys uh, one of the downers that I made for this pack. Um, so let's play the full downer first, which makes the most sense, I suppose. Okie doke. So let's kind of break down uh, piece by piece what this is made out of here. Um, it's not all that complex. I just have uh, with downers and well, with all, all sound design really, uh, a big element is uh, automation, MIDI automation and, and uh, track automation. So um, a few things that I have going here, uh, let's play this track on its own first. I could show you uh, what it sound, sounded like. Oh, let me show you uh, the raw sound here because it's been stretched so if you look here in cubase it's really easy to uh, stretch and manipulate audio so i do this for my risers if you watched my riser pack um a few few months back um the the tutorial for that i talk a little bit about how i stretch audio for that um but so the way you do it in cubase it's really easy so you just do sizing applies time stretch and then you can grab any of this and then instead of just elongating the clip like it would for normal normal audio clip when you have just the normal uh, pointer selected when you do it when you have this selected it stretches the clip instead um, so that's super useful for for making you know really cool original sounds uh, especially for making drones on their own if you're not for, for this I'm using all density um, but if you're making drones on your own out of just different stuff I mean you can make drones out of people's voices all kinds of different things um, so that's a cool little feature that you can use in Cubase um, so the reason why I'm playing it out of the file is because uh, I don't want it to it's manipulated so this one is so if in our density when you buy density um, it comes with if you go in the folder here uh, it comes with obviously the regular density engine but it also comes with all these the way a wave folder and so it's got all this different stuff and so this is a good way to start with uh, original sound design because uh, it's easier to manipulate the audio files a lot of the time. Um, so this here is some downers that are already in here, for example. Uh, so this one is this one here. This is the one I used. So there's the original drone that I started with there. Alright, so what I did to this is obviously I stretched it, I faded it out, um, I've got some pitch automation going uh, with downers. The uh, ideal thing to do is you want the pitch to go down. Um, the intensity, they're called downers for two reasons, because the intensity starts high and it goes down. Um, fades out, but it's all they're also called downers because they decrease in pitch uh, Same reason why risers are called risers um, So I've got some pitch automation here Going on. I'm just decreasing the pitch as it goes to give the downer effect um, That I'm using this is the pitch automation. I usually uh, Care to use uh, it's just this sound shifter plugin from waves. It's super simple uh, you just shift it. I like to shift it by sense. Uh, that's the best thing to do because if you shift it by semitones, 
it's going to sound chunky. It's going to sound da 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 da. It's not going to sound smooth. If you shift it, sen uh, sense is a lot smaller. Uh, so when you shift it by sense, it sounds like a smooth decline instead of this chunky step sequence. Um, so that's what I have going on here. And then I have volume automation uh, taking down the intensity. Um, so I'm using, it's really easy in Cubase to, you can do track automation very easily here on this front page. So um, if you, when you have any of these plugins in, it's, Obviously, you can do the volume. Um, you could do that in any DAW easily. Uh, but what you can also do is any plugin that you have, you can just go in here and you can choose that. So um, open this guy and then you can go to your inserts and all your plugins that you have currently used are here. So I'm using, um, you could do, I think it's just called pitch. Uh, yeah, see, it's just called pitch. Cubase calls it its own thing a lot of the time. Um, but so you just use that, and then I've drawn in the automation here. Um, I'm also using my favorite uh, saturation plugin, which is Isotope. Um, I'm using this plugin. Uh, I think it's one of the aggressive ones. Uh, oh, it's heavy. Um, I usually like to go with the aggressive or heavy ones because I'm an aggressive and heavy guy. Um, so that's a cool, it's, it's just a preset. Um, a lot of the times, a lot of the, my, my philosophy on presets is you start with the preset and then you go from there. You know, if you, if you don't like how the preset sounds, it's a preset for a reason because it sounds good, you know? So um, I start there and then, you know, m m uh, see, like I've decreased the dri drive a little bit and the gain, so it that's a it's a good jumping off point always to to use the presets. Um, it's my philosophy anyway on it, um, and I'm just doing a little bit of a low cut here on it. So um, let's hear how that sound sounds now that it's manipulated. <laughs> All right, so that's the new sound. That's what it sounds like now, now that we have all this going on. Um, all right, let's go on to the next. Kind of the same thing. Uh, a lot of these are kind of going to be the same track automation because you want kind of, you, most, you want most of your stuff to do that decline in pitch. I have a lot more going on um, in this track. The reason why you see multiple of these... Uh, sound shifter plugins is because uh, I wanted it more than you can only do an octave on this so if I wanted it up more than an octave you need to put more than one of these sound shifter plugins and they'll they'll act cumulatively um, it'll just keep rising or lowering depending on you know where the original sound is uh, I've also used I kind of wanted more of a guitar sound for this, uh, so I've just used this VST amp rack. I use this a lot of the time for distortion as well. Probably another low cut. Um, I like to do that after I'm done manipulating the sound, just to clean up any you know gunk that's down there at the bottom. Uh, a lot of this stuff down here, you're not even going to hear. Uh, you're just going to feel it. Um, and if it builds up too high in this low area, uh, it's going to uh, sound really muddy very quickly. All right. And I've got this ring mod going on. All right. And so this sound, now that it's manipulated. Oh, and I've stretched this too. Same thing I did with this one. That's a big thing I like to do. Okie doke. All right, moving on. Uh, 
to this. One of the cool things that we have um, is these stutters. Uh, they sound super cool. Oh, I didn't play that one on its own, but I think you get the point. It's a drone. Uh, we got a lot of cool drones, but... All right, so let's play this on its own here. So let's go into the stutters folder here. Find this one here. What is it called? Tabora. Uh, there we go. This guy. All right. All, all these. They sound super cool. I. I. They're super useful. <laughs> Really cool. I really like a, all these. Super valuable, super useful. Um, so with that, once again, I've stretched it uh, because you don't want it to sound like the original, you know, file when you're creating your, you know, your custom stuff. You, you don't want it to sound like because if if you use the this the the sample just as is, I mean, people are gonna know that it was from this library or whatever. So um, if you're making your own custom stuff you don't want it to sound like it's from this library necessarily if it's custom sound design work you know um so all i have going on this is i've stretched it and i've put a low cut on it for the same reason that i put a low cut on everything so all right another cool sound um, so my second favorite thing in this library, cause I do a lot of horror music, um, horror music, um, I should say, uh, so these metal swipes that we have in here are also just super cool. Um, why isn't this folder opening now? Okay. Super cool. Um, so let's see, where are they again? Oh, they're in uh, revert. No transitions. That's right. Okay, so uh, the, these metal ones. So we have a lot of these cool transitions here. Uh, there's kind of uh, things that you can use between your acts if you're uh, if you're at a stopping point between your acts. Okay, so let's see which one is this. So this is twenty three. Let's check this one out. super perfect for you know all all types of music horror music it's cool for different sci-fi stuff if you if you use it right um and i think i've let's see i've done uh oh i i brought it down an octave a full octave so this is stretched and down an octave right here all right Moving on, this is uh, one of the reverse effects that we have in there, and I've just done some pitch automation. Haven't done anything with the volume, um, and it's the same pitch plugin, obviously, that I normally use. And I guess I close this down here. Mammoth, density, waves. Okay, so transitions. Oh no, it's a uh, reverse, reverse effect. So I think with this, what I did is I just reversed the reverse effect and made it forwards. Um, and I don't think this one has a tail. Oh, it's one of the tonal ones. That's right. Okay. Uh, 15. Alright, this library's got a lot of this awesome stuff in it. I love density. Not just because I work here. Alright, um... So let's hear what this sounds like. And what I, did I do? do I did I stretch it too? Yeah, I stretched it too. cool 
little sound. Um, and let's move on to this last one here. So this is one of the organic transitions. Um, so yeah, look, look, I stretched all every one of these sounds. In fact, it's a common thing that I like to do. Okay, let's see. So this one is an organic transition. Boop. And number two. Here we go. All right. And what I've done. Oh, yeah. I'd, I like to use this chopper um, kind of as a stutter plugin. Um, and if you want it like super choppy uh, to sound super cut off, I like to use this one. It's kind of super abrupt on on both points here um and then you can choose the speed you can choose you know what uh increment what note value you want it to be at uh there and so i've used uh my go-to here uh and i've also used some pitch automation i believe oh i didn't do any automation i'm just bringing it up an octave um, and then I'm probably cutting off the bottom of it, so it's not too muddy. Alright, let's check this out. This is the last sound that I used in this. Alright, and, and then I like, I like, I usually like to, all this has reverb on it. Um, one of my go-to reverbs is, uh, Valhalla Room. It's an awesome reverb. It's only 50 bucks. All of Valhalla's um, plugins, all the Valhalla plugins are only 50 bucks. Um, so they're super, super good. I really like the, the vintage and they got the room reverb like this one. And they got a, uh, a shimmer verb that I use a lot. That's super good for, you know, uh, cymbal sounds and all sorts of different stuff. Um, so once again, let's hear this uh, as it ended up. All right. So that's how I make my downers. Um, you guys have a great day and I hope you uh, had a good time learning how to make downers.